Brand Africa 100, and this is the Botswana chapter, and we are stationed right here in the heart of Southern Africa. My name is Lusika Seboni, and I will be your host for today. We're live from Footprints Advertising, uh, an affiliation of the Brand Leadership Group in South Africa. Uh, I'm joined here by last year's winner, and uh, a real stalwart, and somebody who's made it on to uh, Brand Africa's top 100. He's actually been on that list, and uh, it's Botswana's very own uh, Bans Maplanka. Hola, hola, Bani. <laughs> nice one, man. Yes, and um, I'm also joined by uh, my president from the Botswana Basketball Association, but she's not here wearing that hat. Uh, she's 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 done it all uh, and has a real understanding for brands, but she's also coaches for. Uh, your night films uh, buffet breakfast and name is Vinelo Po Ali. Uh, oh, welcome. So it's Africa Day today. Uh, hello Africa, tell me how you're doing. We were here around the same time uh, last year uh, and I was joined by our very own Honorable Bay, Elim Mevo Olo Keno and uh, we we're revealing uh, Botswana's very best. I think brands are important. We need to be able to uh, envision our brands as not only brands that resonate with us as Botswana, but we want to build great Botswana brands that even resonate uh, across the African continent. And this is why we're here today. So yes, I will be uh, handing I'll be handing on over to um, Karen from Canada and uh, Tevi Kalafin uh, from Johannesburg, so that we can speak about the methodology and then we'll get through to the results and then I'll be engaging with yourself right after this. Dumela. Hello there. Hi. Hello. Um, yes, I'm Karen Deshen and I'm joining you today from Kantar. And we are the insights agency that has prepared the Brand Africa 100 on behalf of the Brand Leadership Group. Yes, it's a very exciting day for us um, as it's our passion um, as an insights agency that works across Africa to really understand people and to help our clients to build strong brands. So today is exciting as many of our clients are waiting to see how have they fared in this year's 100 index. So um, as many of you will know, and as Asika has already indicated, Brand Africa is now becoming one of the events on the African uh, brand um, calendar for the year. It's the 11th year that we're running the study um, on the continent. And this year it's bigger than ever. We've got increased sample sizes, we've got more coverage, and it really is an exciting year for the program. So let's go straight on to the coverage and see where did we actually do our research this year. This year we've got more countries than ever, as I've said. It's 28 countries that we've covered. We started West Africa, then we moved to East Africa, South Af Southern Africa, North Africa, and Central Africa. 28 countries, and there they are. Um, do have a look at your countries represented, and I'm sure you'll be excited to see the brands um, coming through there when it's time for your presentation too. Today we've got seven presentations covering um, uh, east to west, um, and we'll finish up tonight in Cote d'Ivoire with the final findings. So how do we go about doing the Brand Africa 100 Index? Well, first of all, it's a huge thanks to Geopol, um, who does the majority of the data collection for the program using their mobile platform. 
We then get all that data from Geopol and we code it, we classify it, and we put it together in a way, and then wait it to get to the Brand Africa 100 index. So let's understand a little bit more about that data collection. And a really big thanks to Geopol, as I said, to Caitlin and her team in Kenya and across the continent that have um, led the data collection program. And next slide. Geopol has huge coverage in Africa. As you can see, the whole continent almost is colored in. Got five million people that are we can access um, on this platform to do the research, which is quite incredible coverage. And we know that mobile is so close to people's hearts and minds, and we it's a great way to do insights generation um, in our continent. So we have two key ways that we do the collection. The first is SMS, and that's what we use for, for people that don't have a smartphone. And it's very easy. We just ask them, you know, what are your favorite brands? And they can respond um, to the data via SMS. And for those that do have smartphones, we use the mobile web method. Um, so the questions get delivered to them in the link, and they can fill it in from there. And mobile is fantastic for data collection because we have wonderful, wonderful um, mobile coverage now in Africa. 747 million people in Africa have got access to a SIM card. And this is enabling them to think, buy, do, get jobs, connect with one another, and, once, and of course, do research and tell them about the brands that they love. And what we're seeing now is we've got about 49% um, mobile penetration and high percentage of people with a smartphone. So yes, a great way to collect the surveys. If you want to find more about Geopol, you can have a look at Geopol surveys on Twitter or visit their website. So the survey covers a couple of key areas. And the first one is the most important one, which gives us the brand Africa 100 index. And that is, which are the brands that you admire the most? Now here we ask people to give us at least three different brands that they admire. And um, they can come from any category, it could be a mobile phone, it could be a brand of alcohol, it could be a bank, it could be a telephone, whatever the brand is that you admire the most in your country is what we pick up on our survey. We then move specifically to understand the brands that are resonating, that actually originate in Africa. So we ask people, what is your most admired brand that's made in Africa, originates here? We also get for three answers there per person. We then move to financial services, which is such an important part of um, driving brand development in our country and letting money move around and enabling purchase of the brands and services that we want. And we finished up by looking at what is the most admired media brand. And this could be a radio station, a television station, a newspaper, online. It's all covered in the survey. And those, the media channels are the way that information travels and brands get built is through our media partners. And we were really thankful to them for the contribution they make to brand building in Africa. And in 2021, given that it's been such a crazy year for all of us, who would have thought we'd have our guests um, in studio today wearing masks? I don't think any of us would have. Um, and we added a question, which was, which brand do you think has been most effective in helping during these COVID times? And we've got an interesting collection of brands that are coming through as having been wonderfully supportive during this period. So out of those three brands per question, we end up with something like 80,000 different brand mentions. It's a crazy amount of data. We classify, we code, we put it all together into um, something that makes sense. We picked up about 3,500 individual brand mentions this year. And once we've sorted out all the brands and classified them correctly, we then need to move into the waiting process. I'm just waiting for the slide. One of the things we are really hopeful for in Africa is a huge improvement in internet connection across our continent. We've already seen um, that developing in leaps and bounds, but we want to see it growing even further. So um, as I said, once we've got all those that the, the brands coded, we then weight the data. So we look at the, the population size, the sample size, and we developed a weighted average index for the brands. And that's where the brand 100 comes from. And in order to qualify to actually get onto that top 100 list, you need to be 
recalled in at least one other country than your home country. So it is ultimately a pan-African index. Um, we also do present individual country data and we've got seven countries being presented today and the next countries will present it over the next couple of weeks. So I thought I would begin by just giving a little a bit of a, an insight into the kind of brands that we're seeing coming through in the index, and then I'm going to hand over to Tebe, who will actually give us the findings. So COVID and the whole year of 2020 impacted all our lives. It, it was an opportunity for us to stop, slow down, step back, and in some cases for brands, it had a favorable um, impact, and in other cases, not so favorable impact on brand um, love and brand connection. So what we have seen is that any product that's got some kind of germ fighting abilities, cleansing properties, has benefited during this period. People have become far more conscious about the importance of cleansing and staying safe and staying healthy, and these brands have benefited. Um, we still see that sports has a huge impact on the brands which are loved and sit firmly in the hearts and minds um, of Africans. And even though sport was put on hold, sport was still there, even be it via reruns, still very, very influential on the brands we love. Um, just a shout out for the brands that have managed to survive through the really tough times affecting um, brands that are sold in, in bars and restaurants, where often products were no longer available for sale as people weren't allowed to go out. But we still see that it doesn't take just one year to um, affect those brands. They still live on and people have, have very strong bonds with those brands. And lastly, what we've seen from a sort of fashion perspective, and we know that fashion, color, energy in Africa is really important. We've seen that people move from more formal wear to informal wear as they spend more time at home and they don't go out as much. So what I can say is that the strong brands, despite that interruption of 2020, they live on in people's minds. So let's have a look at the kind of things people are looking for. So firstly, in every country, we see the importance of African fabric. The, the different names for, for African fabric come through in each country, be it Katanga, be it wax, be whatever it is that people uh, call the fabric in their country. This comes through and people love these things. They think of it as a brand. We haven't actually included that in the index, but they are definitely believed to be brands. People are looking for products that are durable and have great design. And in particular, mobile phones are a huge, uh, they occupy a huge emotional space in our hearts um, across the continent. What has been accelerated in 2020 and 2021 has been online purchase. People that may have been afraid or reluctant to interact online are buying produce, are ordering food, and the brands that are delivering that um, effectively have grown. We also see how important mobile phones are um, and how mobile phones have really embraced um, the financial system and are, are giving people a more inclusive way of banking and moving their money around the continent. I've already said this, but the brands that sponsor um, football are delivering in the continent. They are really resonating with people, in particular the ones that um, get behind our sporting stars like Tusker are coming through very strongly um, in our index. And you can see how important these emotional links are for people with brands. Um, a brand like Guinness, who has been, it's a global brand, but it's been really active in understanding people, getting beneath the insights of what people want and what they think about in Africa, is coming through as believed to be an African brand, even though it actually originates in that little island um, to the north of us. Right, so the other thing we see coming through in the index is quite a lot of mobile handsets. Of course, people would love the likes of a brand like Apple, but something like Techno is a Chinese giant who has really got to understand what people want in Africa, what their price points are, how to bring products and services that <coughs> are affordable and accessible to people. And from an automotive perspective, we see some local players that are building great, rugged, affordable, you know, resilient products that are, that are made for African roads and are bringing the value that people look for. Brands like Innocent, like Katanka, are coming through um, in their markets. And we are always pleased to see the local conglomerates coming through on our index. Dangote is a brand that people feel very proud of in Africa. It's grown from its home country of Nigeria into many other countries. And we also see products like Azam coming through from Tanzania, and um, they are accelerating across the continent by bringing their products and services to market elsewhere. So well done to you. And we must recognize the brands that have been here in Africa for many, many years. Coca-Cola 
has been here distributing their products, meeting the needs of, 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 of the continent for over 90 years. And of course, we see them in uh, the top tier of our brand index. Um, I've already said it, how important the handset is, but the handset is nothing without the mobile provider. And it's wonderful to see a brand like MTN, which has been mentioned in 15 countries as being one of the most admired brands. And that's the fabric of our society, it's the connections we have, and MTN and other mobile providers are really there to support brand building um, in Africa and to connect us with one another. So what we also pick up in our index is that when we ask people to tell us the brands that they admire that are African, it's actually many international brands that get mentioned. This is because the way people are delivering services, they're thinking locally, even though they're acting and distributing in a more global globally compliant way. And it's that local insight and local connection that helps them to be more successful. So all I can say is continue to do that. People believe you are African. They love you for what you do and just keep just um, staying connected with what the local trends are and you will continue to be successful. Uh, global brands like Nike have really um, found those um, sports stars and local uh, designers that um, people really relate to, and this has helped them to accelerate their presence in the market. Um, you know, Nike getting behind Custer, behind Kenyan runners, behind influencers like Starboy, and of course designers, um, and really embracing the color and the flavor of Africa in um, in the way that they bring product to market in Africa. Uh, Nike really does know how to um, connect on a more real and local level. So well done to you, Nike. So at this point, I think you're all waiting in anticipation to know, so who is in the top 100? And I think there's no better person than the founder and chairman of Brand Africa, Mr. Tebia Kalafing, a man who is absolutely passionate about building brands in Africa to share the findings of this year's Brand Africa 100 2021. So over to you, Tebe. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, Batswana Dumelang. Good morning, Africa. Good morning, afternoon. I have not. It's twenty. It's ten to twelve where I am. I'm in Ivory Coast. I'm sure it's um, trying to look at Karen. You put together an interesting way for me to figure out the time. But thank you for those insights, uh, Karen. Uh, they really lay a beautiful foundation for uh, for for the brands that we are going to see come uh, come through uh, come through today. I stole this map, by the way. I'll tell you. But I gave you credit to Mesa Kaba. It's about how the whole continent comes together. And this is how the continent comes together. Only 13% of the brands that Africans admire are African. Yes, it's the same number as last year. We have held for it, we have held steady. Uh, as we have with everything else in life because COVID brought everything to a halt. And interestingly enough, we ended up with 13%, which is the same number as we did last year as well. And all those brands are coming from Nigeria, from Southern Af from South Africa, from Kenya, and from Ethiopia, who dominates the, the, the 13 brands in the, in, the top, in the top list. So here are the brands that are top of the list in the continent. Number three, Samsung. Number two, Adidas. Number one, Nike. The top 10 brands in the continent are Nike, Adidas, Samsung, Coca-Cola, Apple, Techno, Puma, Gucci has been there forever. In all the 10 years we've been around, Gucci has been there. Toyota has been as well, and Zara. Then we also ask another important question. What is the most admired African brand? Because we're really key about having to understand the African brands. Because when you just speak generally, we don't get to see as many African brands. So we ask, what, are the most, what is the most admired African brand? When we say that, Dangote tops the list. When we don't say that, M10 tops the list. So an interesting interplay between the two giants of the continent, one from telecoms and one is an industrial giant, the two strongest brand in the continent. In media, CNN, BBC has always been, a BBC has been number one for the last 10 years until DSTV knocked it out. Why did DSTV knock it out? DSTV knocked it out because we are streaming live, we're at home, and DSTV is bringing all the channels uh, to us. And that's why we're seeing the list as it is, DSTV as the number one most admired African media brand from banking, Absa, FNB, GT Bank again, back, GT Bank investing in technology, investing in um, in digital uh, banking on the on on the future and not and and, and not be not constrained uh, by its legacy and where it comes from. 
These are the top 10 brands, banking brands from the continent. You can see dominated by Nigeria and South Africa. As has been, whether you read about it, you know those are the big banks. When you watch CNN, those are the big banks, and the, the research are based in this one. So this year, as Karen said, we wanted to also know how did COVID impact everybody. But in this question, we wanted to know which are those brands that have, uh, that have been uh, really, really helpful during the COVID era. WHO, World Health Organization, very, very omnipresent, top of the list. MTN, top of the African list. So these are two of the biggest brands, the biggest telecommunication brand, but we know why MTN uh, 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 is, is in the list. MTN contributed 9 million vaccines across the continent. And that's why a brand like that comes so strong uh, because it con contributed to all the countries where they do business. The categories which we are familiar with, consumers, Nestle, electronics, uh, Samsung, automobile, Toyota. So you look across luxury, Gucci, apparel, Zara. So these are the key categories that are dominating year in and year out. And Karen said earlier about the question about what is the brand that, uh, that everybody mis uh, um, uh, uh, mistakes for an African brand? Coke, Nike, Techno, Nestle, but everybody knows it's America. Everybody knows Nike is, is, uh, is Michael Jordan. Well, not uh, interestingly is when you speak to the majority of the people, they think there's a Nike here somewhere, uh, which comes from here. Because these brands are the Vliscos, the Samsungs, have really done a, a tremendous job of, uh, of, of building a good relationship with the consumers here in the continent. Then when you look at the category toppers, uh, our brands that top the categories, Nike, Ethiopian Air, what an incredible uh, story. Went from zero to number 51 on the basis of the work that they've done around the continent, uh, around the world, moving vaccines, moving PPEs around the continent. 23 of the top 20, out of the 28 countries, the number one brand in those countries, not African. We got work cut out for us. So we need to build more brands uh, in, in, in our continent. So the brands that people love in the continent, in the countries, are African brands. This week, at the end of the week, you will see the African Business Report is cut out. And when it comes out, this is the top 100 brands that we are publishing today that you have the privilege of, 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 of getting to know. So let's talk a little bit about Botswana. Let's talk about the brands in Botswana. Number three, Puma. Most of my brands in Botswana. Number two, Adidas. Number three, again. Number one, rather, again, Olkasi. Olkasi continues to, 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 to confirm found uh, to excite, uh, to really tell the story of the upstart African brands, which are, which are really uh, going against uh, the, the established brands. I mean, I, I know Orcas for so many years. I'm so proud to see them uh, really as a, as a resilient uh, uh, made in Botswana brand, made in Africa brand. Congratulations to Orcas and giving it to Puma, to Adidas, and to all the other brands uh, in, the, uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in the country. Most admired African brand, Chobis, number one, Orkasi. Orkasi is really doing it and giving it, uh, really giving it up uh, uh, to, 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 the, to, the, to the competitors in the local market. Uh, you can see the top list again, the top uh, uh, 10 uh, uh, brands in the continent, the, in, 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 in Botswana. The other from South Africa or they're from Botswana? Makes sense because the proximity of the two countries uh, and their relationships over the years and the fact that we're in and out of our country all the time. What's so beautiful though is to see that some of these brands are small brands uh, that are locally made. Uh, most admired local media brands, BTV, Tuma, and Yarona. Yarona has done an amazing job. Uh, uh, obviously, Yarona has uh, got a pulse on pulse of, uh, of, of, of the listener of what's happening in the country. Uh, number one radio station, so it's a local radio station. I'm sure there is going to be no questions about that uh, as to who uh, leads the charts when it comes to, uh, to media. You can look at some of the media there that you are very, very familiar with uh, uh, in, the, in the country, all the way down to... Um, Lehi and, and many others uh, uh, in the country. Uh, the most admired local financial brand, BIFM, Letsejo, 
Botswana Life. I think Botswana Life was again top of the list last year, continues to, uh, to, to, to stamp its authority in, uh, in the country as the go-to financial services brand uh, that looks after Botswana's, Botswana's life. You can see the brands, you're familiar with, all, with, uh, with many of the brands in the top 10. And now comes to the brands that have been admired throughout COVID. Orange, Tepswana, Choppies. Choppies is one of those amazing uh, uh, retail stores. Every time I'm in Botswana, uh, I've seen one, in, I've seen one, I know they listed in South Africa a while ago, but they delisted, but, uh, but just the mere audacity of listing, the mere audacity of having shops uh, beyond the borders shows you the vision of the company, the vision of the, of, 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 they, they believe that they are part of, 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 of Botswana. And Chop is, uh, is one of those brands uh, at the top of the list seem to have been done really well during COVID. I'm sure you know the stories, you know, you know what they've done, um, you know what, uh, what, what they've contributed to um, uh, to, um, to to Botswana. Um, most admired brands per region, Adidas. Adidas uh, uh, in Southern Africa, Adidas tops uh, tops the list of the, of the most admired brands. Uh, so now, now you've got the list, and I want to hand it over to Lucika, who may have a, a couple of questions for us. Um, that is. Uh, this is uh, yeah, it's mind blowing. Um, we we are really excited uh, to be seeing these results, and the more so that I'm sitting here uh, with the most admired African brand, uh, that is uh, Mr. Baz Maplank. I will give you a few of and uh, also for Yarn FM, we've come a long way because uh, they've always come, especially in the media space, uh, before uh, the Voice and even Juma FM. Um, I think some of the questions that may have been there, really, Tebe, uh, you, you've mentioned the fact that we, we've kind of remained uh, in the same sort of place that we've been because of COVID. Uh, have we been affected as, as Botswana uh, as well? Well, I think we've all been affected. All all the brands have been affected. All the brands have, uh, have, have, have all the countries. I mean, we pretty much uh, we are all at the reset. So we all at at, at a starting uh, quote unquote starting scratch again. So it's just coincidental, uh, or it doesn't not unsurprising that even when it comes to our choices, our choices have not changed uh, that much. But also, it speaks to the strength of these brands. I've I've I've, I've seen. Um, a certain shift, especially within the commercial banking space, where uh, we have our big bank. Big bank here would be First National Bank. Uh, and we see Bank Khaburoni uh, topping even APSA as, as, a, as, a, as a top, uh, you know, renowned uh, local brand or admired brand here locally. Why do you think that could be? Lucica, you probably can tell me a little bit, but a little bit more about what what is doing well. But certainly, when I see anything called Bank Botswana, I'm already beginning to think, oh, it's one of our banks. It is probably contributing to the uh, to, uh, to 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 the, to the community, to the country. But the thing that we know about banks, though, is that banks are not necessarily loved generally. So when a bank is loved, it means that it's probably loved because one is doing great service, one it is efficient, and one it has got the right products at the right prices. So, and I suspect that will be the case with Bank Botswana. And I'll, I'll be quite keen to hear from you. Uh, yeah, Bank Botswana. Bank Botswana is something else. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Bank uh, Botswana. Yes. <laughs> And then Muscom, Muscom is appearing under financial services, um, but they're, they're widely known as a telco. You know what's interesting about the telcos, uh, whether it's Safaricom, they created Mbesa, whether it's MTN with their Momo, Momo um, MTN Money, uh, all the all the financial services and the, the, the mobile brands uh, are, are understanding that they are more than just uh, are telephony. They're also about connecting. They're also about transacting. So that's why you're beginning to see all these and all these brands have got them a, a money product. Yeah. I think a, a final question to you, you know, what do we need to do locally 
to, 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 to be able to assist in this space as brand practitioners to make sure that the brands that we're representing and that are representing themselves uh, could one day find themselves on Africa or brand Africa's top 100 list. You know, so somebody said it earlier, and I think I want to repeat what they've said, is we need to learn from the global brands. What the global brands have done well, they've done a couple of things well. One is they invest in their brands. Second, they tell great stories that people can relate to. And third and most, uh, third and most important, they really, really, really build the relationship with the consumers and they are responsive to the consumers. So you need to be relevant. Uh, you need to tell good stories and you need to invest in your brand. The challenge that you see with uh, a lot of local brands is they take a lot of shortcuts. They forget that building a brand is like a bird builds a nest, one strand at a time. So you take your time uh, to build a great brand. Uh, it takes a lot of patience, takes a lot of money, takes a lot of love. And that's how you build a great brand. That's what we can learn from that. Not and not try and rush and we launch tomorrow and now you start telling people you're a great brand. Yes, it does happen sometimes. It does happen that discovery is less than 20 years, for example. It does happen that Google is less than 15 years. It does happen that Facebook is less than 15 years. But what they do do, those brands, those are multi-billion dollar brands. They build scale very quickly. They've got private investors to put in a lot of money in order to be able to build uh, a scale and to tell good stories. I think um, I need an opportunity to be able to uh, speak to my panel here, especially the most admired brand. Um, uh, is Orkasi appearing on the top 100 uh, uh, list for Africa? That's no, Orkasi. Orkasi is on the Africa list, yes, I think it's on the Africa list. Um, and, yeah. uh, it's, it's an amazing brand, Orkasi. It's done very well. Um, uh, in, uh, in, in in its time. And I've always, you know, my story with Onkasi is having seen them as a national brand for the national team at one stage in its, in its history. That's how you build confidence. Because the only thing we need is we need confidence in our own brands. We need to invest in them and we need to support them. And there's a new campaign now that they've been running. And I need to ask you this, by because it's very important. Here comes COVID. And then while we're in, within this COVID era, you found new ways to be able to adapt and stay relevant within the market. And uh, I know we can't see it because the stomach is there, but you know, here's this, here's this campaign. It's reading on his t-shirt, Tebe, United for BW Sports. And I've seen from the, the, His Excellency, the President, uh, to ministers and influencers, everybody wants to get uh, their hands on this particular t-shirt as we root behind Nigel Amos and Isaac Makwala uh, as they're getting ready for the Olympics. And this was quite genius. Um, and how, how, you know, what comes to your head when you think about uh, these adaptation methods? Is that my question? That's what you Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically being uh, alive, uh, basically being alive and uh, uh, present in the moments, the moments like COVID. How do we as brands survive in this kind of space? Mm. Um, and big brands, when they in terms of niche, really show empathy, like Teva just said, so that we relate to the end user, we stay relevant in our minds. Sorry, you know, in difficult times, these are the guys who are there for us. Mm. So we came up with this initiative to bring everyone around a uh, sport, of course, and create a sports fund that's going to help. I mean, here in Botswana, we haven't uh, kicked the ball for a year now plus. Mm. Uh, you can imagine what's Even for thing. Sunday soccer. For Sunday soccer. For guys. The ones are happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see, so we needed to come up with a, a campaign. That's really going to look out for sport, create a fund for sport, and help these guys get back to play. Mm. So this campaign must really be had that, you know, showing their empathy and uh, really being there for people. I'm sure we you also have to get your hands on, on a United for BWC. You, you already have it. You already have one. Yeah, so how do you feel when you wear a shirt like this? National pride, I mean, this is...
to events on the ground. Yeah. I think uh, we have lost to, to, to your stream there, Karen and Tebe. Um, uh, is there anything that you, you, you wanted to add uh, to, to, to this stream? We're supposed to be having new men um, uh, join us as well on this. On this about new men's story, uh, new men, uh, Ramatokwan, except for Ramatokwan. You know, I met the young man uh, because the mom makes magical syrup. For nobody to understand that Monday in a row, I'm only my balls to do go go marketing for BBS, and that's why I met the young man. He was always driven, and I think the entrepreneurship uh, spirit was being built from home. Eh, mama na watu sa wala sa wala kaya na chano kano ba tuba pela and and so on and so forth. He went and started his own catering company, and that went too well. And uh, now we're speaking about a serial, uh, a serial businessman nice. who. You know, it went really big into events. And events were only done by the companies that were affiliated to Johannesburg. And for native events, they really set a benchmark, uh, which was which was an international standard for our local market. Absolutely, but I'll tell you something I admire about Muba. I wish he was here. Uh, when he came up with Muba, mm. this was a spin-off the COVID period where deliveries became a thing, mm. and he tapped. Well, and now we've got like a regular customer base uh, for delivering drinks, which was uh, which he didn't do before, did he? Adult, adult drinks. Let me tell you even yeah. even further from that because when the when the events were shut down, that means he can't de sell the furniture, yeah. he can set up these tents. Yeah. Uh, he managed to sell some, and then Abara got a combi. So he bought these combis, and there was a time where everybody was on lockdown, but essential services workers. Uh, needed to get to places, yeah. so he registered his company as an essential service provider and uh, managed to transport the people. So now it's up like a then you go to between uh, eight and four o'clock. What do I do, you know, to prepare to take these people back to their places on a boat? Uh, and then that's when Uber came in. They go there, right? No, but Robert, I did drink, see, COVID in a day, but then you could be mechanism inside, and he decided to get into that space. Um, and then uh, he has. Uh, a digital uh, uh, marketing agency is called uh, 52 Sundays, and a lot of the young upcoming budding uh, gurus, uh, because digital is easy to get as traditional uh, media practitioners had to relearn. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 you know, what, the service that we're providing to uh, to our customers and out there. But yeah, I think all in all, it's been absolutely lovely. Um, uh, there are three brands that have been mentioned there, and we need to give them a round of applause for uh, best adaptation to COVID. Uh, orange, he said orange, maybe that's how I say it in French. Uh, and so, Orange Botswana, uh, big up to yourself. Um, Debswana, uh, I was just reaching out to Agatha uh, this morning and telling her, listen, I think there might be a, a special surprise. Uh, but you know, we will be engaging with them further, TT. Uh, uh, from the voice, just to be able to find out more from them what it is that they were doing, um, you know, in order to be able to adapt uh, and become a meaningful uh, brand, especially uh, during Nabia uh, COVID. Yeah. And then, uh, top of the list, na 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 choppies. Uh, I think they were, there. <laughs> they were there for the people because, uh, yeah, when you think of the first two lockdowns, like it makes sense. The only thing that you could think about was just. You know, Nuba and, and, and eating. Yeah. yeah. The amount of the amount of weight we put on <laughs> <laughs> during <laughs> during that lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we'll be back again um, uh, next year, uh, same time, uh, same place, or different place, with new partners, uh, as we unpack and we unveil uh, really what the trends are, and uh, you know, continue. And loving your brands, uh, hugging them and harnessing them because uh, really uh, you need to build equity in these because uh, we need to view uh, brands as, as our brothers and sisters and yeah. parents as living, breathing uh, human beings. That's how uh, you really affect the bottom line. Yeah. So, yeah. I really hope, um, for my part, coming from the media end, I saw that 87%, 13% ratio. I hope this time next year that would have changed. Um, so. I think so. I think we we, we, we are we are proud as as, 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 as a nation. I was listening to some of the comments on on uh, the COVID nineteen uh, task force, and the young man was saying that one thing I love about yeah, COVID nineteen. <laughs> <laughs>
that we are But yeah, uh, one of the things that came out was was was, was the fact that you know she, the, the young man said that he loved his uh, color. the color of his skin, and and you will find more and more. Yeah, that's when I went into get their hands on United for PW Sports. Right. We're getting geared up and ready for the Olympics. So really, I'm this to room, uh, make sure that banana uh, my papa, but because it's also for a good cause. Maybe you can end uh, this theory on that note to be able to let them know that the number one top brand, uh, how can they get their hands on it? Yes, it's available at all um, JD Sports outlets across Botswana, 400 bucks, all the proceeds. From this initiative, what was the sports fund? We want to kickstart the basketball, netball, netball, football, and all other sporting codes. And uh, while we're also uh, supporting Team Botswana to 2020. Mm. Yes, that's a wonderful initiative. So, live from Footprints Advertising, uh, leave your mark. Uh, we'll be back again next year. Bye bye, Africa. Tell me how you're doing. Salute. Well, thank you, Africa. Oh, but I <laughs> That's a big brand there. Oh, new man is here. Wow. How so? How so? How so? Log out. Just after you. You're just about to. Okay, maybe make space and then let's have a chat. I can. I can make it. Okay. Please come through, my brother. Can you go to Santa Anita? I'll see. Yeah. No, no, what we are. We're not going to be able to do that. Okay, so back live. Ah, okay, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much, the user. Uh, this is the young man I was speaking about. Again, a new man, I told them the whole story of how we met, the entrepreneurial skills. Then I was doing video for you. Then you were there packaging our food. Now we look at the channel. We look at the video. Rala, how we put that. And then you grew up. You actually tried your hand at cake selling at one time yourself. And uh, he's a serial entrepreneur. And one of the things uh, that I, I had to recognize was a young buck coming under brand. Yeah. But more importantly, as well, he has been recognized as one of the you know as 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 a as a is it a nominee for Forbes under thirty. Uh, top 30, yeah. under 30. 20, 20, 20. Yeah. 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 20, 20. So not only is he a young man, uh, <laughs> but he's doing the other type of all the time. You know, just, you know we, we, want to, we want to ask you that question and say, you know, what goes on through your head to be able to think these things? I've spoken about 52 Sundays. I've spoken about how you bought the community, the ESA essential services workers. And then in between, what can I do? Because this thing is, I don't know if I'm about to uh, adult beverages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. I mean, it's it's been quite a journey. Uh, I think, like you said, uh, my foundation is one of the most important things. My mother taught me survival skills. I think I was more than anything. I became mostly smart than 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 classroom. Uh, you know, being smart in the classroom, which I was, yes. And um, having dropped out of university twice was more of a choice of trying to to pursue my calling in the business industry. Uh, I've I've experienced a lot at a very early age. I remember, you know, uh, my circle of friends when we were up, we ended up patching with earlier than I anticipated because I was considered to be more too serious about life. And um, it's been a journey where toughest decisions have to be made. Mm. And one thing I learned is resilience and maybe to survive through the toughest time. And, you know, from point to point, pillar to pillar, mm. uh, as a businessman, you have to make toughest decisions. And uh, for me, I think it has become more of something that I enjoy doing. Uh, I think where, where there is a challenge is where actually I enjoy it better. It's like, you know, going to the gym. They say until you feel the pain, you know you're actually doing something that's going to bring results. So it's been, it's been phenomenal. It's been challenging. But, you know, you, you never stop. You never stop. You just yeah. need to have a heart of a life. It's tough. And it gets tougher as you go. And yeah, it's, it's just asking, it's asking oneself. Um, you know, what's next uh, on, on Newman's agenda? <laughs> what can yeah. we expect? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just to grow what is already there. I yeah. think a lot of young men and women uh, look up to you. Never all about that. It's a concern. I thought of who I love. Yeah, yeah. 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 so representing. Uh, but yeah, thank you for just making the time to be here. Uh, we want to see your name on uh, the top ten list for Botswana with one of the companies that. Uh, 
uh, that, that, that you're working with? Because you actually know uh, how to position yourself in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, the experience is there. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is, you know, there's the, the ceiling to success, especially as a self-made entrepreneur, because it's too close. So the only way to do is be local, but think global. Mm. So until you start producing yeah. solutions for the auto market, then you realize that the world is your oyster. But if you're thinking Botswana, mm. hey, there's going to be a lot of cry days and uh, it's cold nights for you. So the idea now is to really try to penetrate the outside markets as possible. Mm. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of people outside the country. And for me also, it's it's just trying to prove it to, to a young entrepreneur, a young person out there that it's possible. You can be from Botswana and be able to be an exportable brand. Great stuff. I need to grab something and uh, I need to show I need to show I need to show uh, my brother something here because uh, he's the one who's here. We need to just present this to him. Uh, ah oh, yeah. Era. It's a most admired brand in Botswana and most admired African uh, brand in Botswana. So congratulations to you. Thank you. Oh, I need to show you something else as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So, this is one of the things that uh, we have had. Wow. Uh. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, you want to have Okay, so yeah. Uh, no, this is us signing out. Rale um, Wabutadi. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and thank you to The Voice uh, Online for, for being a really great partner uh, with us today. Uh, and uh, uh, good night, we'll see you again next year. I wasn't asked that part. Right. No, you're so kind. I was going to ask if these guys are going to eat from here. I'm like, this is good. This cannot be.